What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 60 of Sales Stories in Real Life. I'm your host, Alex Bruski, and this is the show where professional salespeople share their stories about memorable buying experiences. Today, we've got a very special guest. Chelsea Norstead is in the house. She is currently the head of sales at Golster and created a discovery model during her time at Verizon to help systematize discovery calls to help the org with cross-selling and upselling that they still use to this day. Very, very cool. Chelsea, welcome to the show. Uh, this is overdue. I, I hear you had a really or are currently having a really interesting buying experience looking for some some calling software. What's, uh, what's happening there, Chelsea? Yeah. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to Lead Feeder. We all know the struggle of identifying website visitors and turning them into valuable leads. Imagine having the power to identify companies visiting your website, track their behavior in real time, and seamlessly integrate it all into your CRM. With customizable notifications, lead scoring, and GDPR compliance, Lead Feeder is changing the lead generation game. Head over to leadfeeder.com, L-E-A-D-F-E-E-D-E-R.com for a demo today. Now, back to the conversation. Yeah, thanks so much for the introduction, Alex. I'm so excited to be here, and you're right. I'm in the middle of a buying cycle right now, looking for calling software. I have seen about three vendors so far. Uh, where I'm at is I don't want to keep viewing vendors. I want to find what I'm looking for, it work well, and to just go from there. Uh, but I should probably tell you how I got started with this. Is that right? <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So when I first started looking for calling software, Golster is a startup, right? There's not a ton of us. We want to be as lean as possible. So you see different things on LinkedIn. I was aware of a few soft or a few calling softwares. I asked a few of my peers what they were using, but ultimately I went to the good old Google <laughs> and I typed in, you know, need calling software, small team, power dialer, something pretty simple. And then just based on SEO, I started clicking through the sites. And after clicking through the sites, I decided I want to start with the cheapest one possible and see if that works for us. Because if it's less money and it does what we need it to, that's really all we need at Golster. So that's kind of how I started my search. Now, when I started, the particular call software I started with was Kixi. And I went through, I went online, I got a free trial. I started, you know, typing everything in, getting everything set up. And I will be honest, it was, it was difficult. It was not easy. Uh, there wasn't, you know, great step-by-step -step videos that I had kind of at the tips of my fingers. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But after I went through, I spent about an hour setting all of this software up got it done. I had a few errors on campaigns and it just, it wasn't working right. I started getting, or I got a list exported into it. And when I went to make my first dial, no name showed up. And I am sure this was a user error. I am absolutely sure. But when you do a free trial, I think for me, what comes to mind is like, if I can just click it and buy it and go and use it, I should be able to click it, buy it, and get it set up so I can use it tomorrow. Otherwise, why are you offering a free trial if I can't use, you know, all of those days? So I tried a little bit more. I fussed with it a little bit longer, and I just got to a point where it just was not going to work. So I thought, okay, next on my list. So I ended up going to the next software. Um, I want to say it was Just Call. And I started using Just Call. I go, I'm fumbling, same kind of story. I export my list, get my list put into there. And by the time I go through all this, I see that there's only one stage and it's for name. So it's just one name, not first name and last name. So that's great. But for me, I want to know all of the details possible. And they're just, I felt weren't enough fields. So at that point, I thought, okay, on to the next, <laughs> which I would like to point out, you know, I might be quickly switching because it isn't easily set up, but I know I'm not the only one doing this. <laughs> yeah. So my next one I went and I went to use phone burner. I go, I sign up. And as soon as I sign up, I get a call from someone named Jim Scott at phone burner. And I'm looking at my phone and, you know, I see his name and I'm like, holy smokes. 
how did this guy just call me? We're a small startup. This is crazy. I'm still going to try to set it up myself. So I ignored the call. Sorry, Jim. And I kept going and trying to set this up. So they had, you know, step-by-step -step videos on everything that I needed to set up. And also I had included, and I think the signup form that I used Apollo. So Jim is also now sending me an email saying, hey, we have integrations with Apollo. Here's some tips on how to use it. Check out these documents. So even though I'm ignoring his call, he is making sure that I have the software. It's set up properly. Here's some tips and tricks. Here's access to resources that you may need later. And the funny part is after I get all this from Jim, and I'm kind of liking Jim at this point, I'm not going to lie, just because of what happened previously. So I'm like, all right, Jim. Um, then is when I finally got an outreach that was specifically from one of the other vendors. So by that point, I think the delay in the response had burned me a little bit. And I was kind of just already off of that train and not even wanting to fix it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, so I keep going, right? And I'm like, Jim Scott from Phone Burner, like he's my guy. I'm going to get in contact with him. I go, I set up the field mapping, which with the other products had been the historically hard part. And it was just like really easy to set up. I got everything done. Um, I looked at some of his resources and after he had left me a voicemail or sorry, yeah, left me a voicemail. He'd sent me an email with his calendar link. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to book a meeting with Jim. I'm going to see how I can use this product a little bit better, make sure I'm getting my money's worth and everything we're looking for. Now I'm ready to talk to someone after all of that, which again, not saying it's the best way, but it, it was my way. <laughs> so I go in, um, Jim and I get on a call. He then starts to do a demo and he starts to demo with great, right? He's not feature dumping. He's like, tell me what you're using. What did you use previously? What do you like about that? Like, why are you even here type questions? And I'm in sales, so I'm going to be fully transparent. I'm like, this stuff was hard to set up. I just need something that does this. I do not need bells and whistles. I don't need fancy. I just need like these few things. So he's like, okay, uh, totally understood. I asked him, I was like, what are the difference between the paid plans? Can you walk me through it? And he told me, I will get to that at the end of the call. Right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through the platform and how you're going to use it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So uh, I keep sitting through it and he goes through the demo and he starts to show me a couple of features that I hadn't set up that I wouldn't have known of had I not sat down with Jim. And one of those was um, you can basically automate voicemail. So if you're getting voicemails, you can tell it which one to send so that you can keep going on your way and take live calls. Obviously, when you're at a startup, you're operating with not a ton of people. That is all we have is time. So when he said that, um, I was a little bit more even sold on the product, knowing that this product was more expensive than the other options I had used previously. So I let Jim um, walk me through all of that. And I did let him know I'm still in the evaluation process now. So we do still have um, one to two other vendors to look at. Again, what's important, ease of use, it, you know, more, more dials are connected. And um, yeah, just keep it simple, inexpensive if possible. But mostly I want to be able to manage this myself and not have to work with someone. Um, so yeah, so Jim... Jim and I scheduled a meeting, I want to say for two weeks out. So I have time to evaluate this. And he let me know in the interim that if I hear something from another vendor and I want to know if they do it, feel free to give him a call and just to keep him in the loop during this process. And like I was saying, I mean, at the end of this, Jim in my eyes is probably the, the person I would want to work with the most compared to all of the companies. And yeah. And I think it's for all of that we talked about, like the access to the resources. But another funny thing is after one of my campaigns aired out, and I want to say it was with Just Call, um, instead of sending me an email or calling me to see what happened, I started then getting promotional offers for the product, like buy it 20% off, buy, you know? And then after, I want to say a few of those is when I finally got someone that was like, sorry for all these emails, do you want to meet? And it's like, no, not at this point. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That ship is sailed, dude. <laughs> yeah, it is more than sailed. Um, and even going forward, like if I get another role at another company, I'll probably call Jim. <laughs>
that's uh that that's the name of the game and so just and so just to be crystal clear so that everyone's understanding this is still an in process evaluation the the evaluation has not has not concluded yeah correct it is still in there i want to get the things set up that jim told me about and make sure that they work the way he says they're going to work i have access to everything and we're going to run a couple trials and then we're going to compare apples you know to apples which will be nice so <laughs> First off, this is really fun because this is, I told you this pre-show, this is the first in-process evaluation that we've done on the show. Um, so this is really cool. And I mean, I was just like, my head hurts. I'm nodding so much. Um, sh shout out to Jim. That I, I love everything that Jim did. But I think like really what I want to do is kind of go back to the beginning because I think this is something that we as salespeople especially are not really particularly privy to, right? It's like, how customers find us, right? Like we're always worrying about outbounds and inbounds, but it's like when people find us, how do they find us, right? And I think it's interesting that you kind of said you were looking for the cheapest option first, right? And everyone who's a salesperson is like, well, you know, our product's more expensive because it's the best. But like, look, as you mentioned, you guys are a small team, right? Not everyone is necessarily thriving uh, in this environment. Some people are extraordinarily thriving. Some are kind of on the opposite end folks would rather do it for cheaper, right? Like, I think that's something that kind of needs to be said and everybody sort of needs to understand. So talk to me from like a buyer's perspective, like when you're going into an evaluation, is it kind of like, hey, look, you know, we're kind of looking for like an MVP almost, right? Like, hey, we want this function, you know, and this is what we're looking for. If someone can do this for us at an affordable price, like we're pretty much going that direction or were you kind of open to hearing about you know, some of those bells and whistles, if they applied to you, or obviously everyone's different here. What was kind of going through your head for this one? Yeah, um, I think at the beginning for me, I didn't want to be shown all the bells and whistles. Like for what we need right now, it's just, we need to execute. We need to do lead blitzes. We don't need to attach it to a ton of stuff. We just want to focus on that right now. So I think if someone would have started getting into, oh, we can do this too. It's just, now I feel like you're wasting my time and I don't have a ton to waste and I already wasted an hour evaluating another software. So it's like, I feel like as a buyer, when I, by the time I get to, what is it? The third vendor I'm evaluating my time that, or I feel like my patience is a little bit shorter too, because it's like, okay, we have less time to do this now. So what's going to happen? So show me, you need, you'll do like exactly what I need you to do. Make sure the price is in my budget. Is it easy to use? And that's it for me. And that t that ties right into a great point, and this is what I, I think is so fascinating, is that you talked about the first couple of vendors, like there was difficulty in the setup. And like, look, let's let's call a spade a spade. If you're a salesperson, that is not your doing, right? Like you don't work in product. You don't work in engineering, right? Whatever it may be, but like, you know, clutch your pearls here. It's still your responsibility, right? To understand where your product stands, in your space, right? So if you know that your product is a bit more difficult to set up than your competitors, you better be all over them during that trial period, right? Helping them get it set up. I mean, as an example, I I, I asked you this pre-show and I'm gonna ask you again, if it took you an hour and a half to get a software set up and it didn't even work, had somebody walked you through and you could have done that in a fraction of a time, would they still potentially be in the evaluation, right? As opposed to you having moved on? What would you think about that? Yeah, a hundred percent, they would still be in the evaluation. I think, and it goes back to, if you're going to offer a free trial, make it easy to set up, you know? And that's just where I'm at with it. Um, to make sure people get the most of that trial time too, you know? Well, I mean, I, I think the most important thing too is like an evaluation isn't just like how much money you're going to spend with a potential vendor. It's like, how much of Chelsea's time are you taking, right? How much time is a head of sales taking away from closing more deals to look for a product, right? If it's arduous and difficult, right? And confusing to use, like that's not only your time. I mean, you even said it, it's like your brain power, right? It's like after doing all these evaluations, it's like, you're kind of fed up, you're kind of annoyed. And that yeah. feeling gets like attached to the vendor. You know, it's like one of those vendors can almost come back to you and say, hey, we'll give you our software at a 98% discount, right? And it's like, they're they're probably already cooked, you know? It's like, I speed to lead is one of those things that has been pretty consistent in just about every episode. It is critical and, and, and kind of ties into my next question too. What I feel like is so fascinating about what Jim did is he was 
giving value without ever having spoke to you, right? He called and you even said, I was setting up, I was determined to set it myself. I ignored his call, right? That's fine. But then he saw, I, I don't remember exactly where it was, but he saw something about Apollo.io, right? And then it was like, okay, instead of just calling Chelsea off the hook, hey, here's how you could, you know, integrate with Apollo.io and here's how, you know, you can get the best out of, you know, it's just all of these little touch points that just like add value, add value, add value. And then like, by the time you get on the phone with Jim, it's like, you already have a positive impression of Jim, right? Because he's just kind of been there in the background, like, hey, here's help if you need it, right? Like, if not, let me know. You know, it's almost like that kind of an approach. Like, hey, here, here's some tips and tricks. If you want to talk to me, I'm here. But like, if not, here are some tips and tricks so you can go and do it yourself. What's going through your head there as a buyer, right? Because like, you, you knew who Jim's name was before you even hopped on a meeting with him, right? Like, would you say that like you got onto that meeting and you already kind of had like a positive outlook, right, of Jim? Or what, what's going through your head there? That I'm really fascinated about. Yeah, um, I like that Jim met me where I wanted to be met, you know, and he let me do it how I wanted to do it. He didn't force his way onto me, I guess. But yeah, by the time I got on that call with Jim, I was like, I like this guy. He knows his shit. Like, he knows what he's doing. And he cares. And one of the things that he reinforced on that call, just that message was, is he asked me, he's like, are you going to be an admin? Are you going to be a user? And I told him, you know, probably both. And that's when he kind of got, okay, this is a little bit more important for her to be able to set this up and make all this work. And I don't think, I don't think obviously that was taken into account in the other ones. It was more just, hey, download a trial. Here's my just, uh, what is it? Automatic, just or sorry, automated email thanking you for it and sign up here. And he was really like, I'm going to get to know you. The account's small, so I have no idea how, you know, he's doing this. I saw your last one where you talk about doing it at scale. I was like, holy smokes, Jim must be a busy guy. <laughs> um, but it was just, yeah, I already liked him. I still like him. And even though I know I need to evaluate someone else, like Jim Scott is in my head. I see him on my phone. I see him in my email. And all he does is help and doesn't, you know, pester me. So it's nice. <laughs> well, you know, speaking, speaking on that, you're just like, you're, you're teeing me up for all my questions so perfectly. Um, I, I thought like one thing, and this was like a really subtle detail. Like I'm all about the really subtle details that make a huge difference. Cause it could be like saying that one thing, right. That like keeps the positive sentiment growing. You know, it's like those little things like here and there that just like steadily increases the positive sentiment for me, like have huge implications on whether you're going to win a deal or not. And one of those moments that I thought Jim really did that was with the competitor thing, because you told him, Hey, I've got a couple other people to evaluate. It wasn't like, Hey, well, here's a discount and let's do it now. And it wasn't like, Hey, well, you know, they suck at this and they suck at this, you know, or we're better than them at this, or, you know, our G2 rating is better than theirs. It was like, Hey, if they have something that you're curious about, whether us having it or not, let me know, right? It's so like just non-invasive, right? And it's so like helpful at the same time because to your point, you told him I don't want to see the bells and whistles. He kind of like leaves the door open to where someone does show you a bell or a whistle that you enjoyed. Like you weren't ready for that when you were on the phone with him, but say you talk to a vendor in the future and they're like, oh, well, we actually have this and that. Now Jim has kind of left the door open to still be that resource of information of like, hey, Jim, I saw, you know, the other vendor has this, right? Like, what would you say to that? Or do you guys have something similar? Did, did, did you, I guess you're in the process and I'm on the outside. Did you kind of pick up on that as things were going, right? Like, does that like make you lean in a little bit more? Does that kind of like increase his value as a subject matter expert or what's what's kind of going through your head there? Yeah. Um, in my mind, it shows con or confidence and not desperation, right? It's like, we know our product's good. We know it does what it needs to. It should do what it needs to for you. Um, and like you said, he didn't try to pressure me to do a fast close. It was like, I know this is part of your process. Go and do your process, but don't forget about me in the meantime, if you have those questions. So yeah, I like the confidence. I like knowing, and I do feel like it's true. Like if I email Jim right now and I'm like, Jim, these people said they do this. Do you guys do that? I just feel like he would email me back fast, which is nice because then if I go in and end up buying that software, I feel like that's how I look at the brand too. You know, if he's really quick to answer me, super helpful, always adding value in the beginning, likely after I purchase the software, I'm going to have that same experience, 
with the others, you know, when it's kind of just figure it out attitude, I feel like that's going to be the same thing. And although I do want to manage it myself, I want that like co-pilot where if I have questions or need help, they can help. I, I feel like what you just said right there, I'm for sure going to cut that up into a small clip. Like, I feel like that is like quite literally why sales stories in real life exists, right? Is like, we all have these products that we're selling and some people are better at stuff than others. And some people are cheaper than others. And some people are more expensive than others. But like the one thing that you can really differentiate yourself with, and, and even myself, right? Like Salesforce has thousands of salespeople, right? Like, and people are constantly getting new account executives every year. Like, the one thing that you can do to make yourself uniquely valuable is give a kick-ass buying experience, right? Like the buying experience that you deliver the customer. I mean, you just said it. Like, I feel like if it's going to be like this on the front end, then it's going to be like this on the back end too. That like is ah, so, so, so perfect. That was a great quote. Okay. One other thing that I have to ask you about, because this I thought was pretty fascinating too. Everyone's going to have their own different take on this. So I'm curious on what your take was. You asked about some pricing options. And I, I don't remember exactly verbatim, but he said something like, hey, let's worry about this first or like, hey, this is more important first. And, you know, maybe that was in the whole admin or user conversation. And then we'll talk about the pricing uh, tiers afterwards. How, how, how does that kind of land for you? Like, do you want people to throw a price range at you right away in that situation? Was it like handled properly? Or again, everyone's going to have a different take here. I'm curious how that landed for you. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, I kind of already knew the prices going into it. What I had asked him is what's your difference between like your standard and your platinum tier, or your three tiers that you have. Um, and how, why does that matter to me? And he said exactly that. He's like, oh, well, we're going to walk through these couple of things and then I'll save some time to review that at the end, um, which I thought was helpful because for me, I didn't know what some of those features were and the differences in tiers. So how would I know if like it matters to me at all? So I think him doing that little walkthrough, pointing to some of this. And then I was like, wow, that feature sounds pretty cool. He, and he's like, okay, so that comes in this tier. And I'm like, you know, I get that. So at the end, when he went and reviewed pricing, I do feel like he was transparent. Um, I think if I would have pushed harder, he would have gave it to me. But I think the way he did it was perfect because then it helped me know exactly what I wanted at the end in which tier. I, I think you bring up a good point there is like you knew because of that trust that was already built, right? You knew that like, if I press for it, I'll get it, you know, but it's like, okay, well, like I'm open to hearing you give context around pricing because you've already been so helpful and you've already added so much value up to this point, right? Like to your point, if you don't do that correctly, if you seem like you're brushing it off or just like flat out saying no and having like no reasoning, then like the skepticism starts to build, right? But when it's like, hey, before we talk about pricing tiers, right? Like let's make sure like what would even be relevant for you to to even purchase. Um, I, I, I like that particularly around tiered pricing. Very, very cool. Okay, so huge shout out to Jim. This is awesome. Very excited to hear how this story ends. May, may, maybe the story will be over by the time the episode comes out and we'll have to do like a little update in the text post. Uh, but got to ask you the same question I always ask everyone, Chelsea. Jim, obviously, I don't want to say did a great job because it's still underway. Jim has done a great job here. For our mm -hmm. sellers that are listening, what would be the one big takeaway, right? Like if folks could take away one thing that Jim did that was awesome, what would it be for you? Um, for me specifically in this, I think it would be care that people are actually using your product <laughs> um, and using it the right way. That is something that with Jim, I, that's why he's in the lead right now, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Simple, uh, simple as that. I love that. It's like care more about like the results that your customers are getting or, you know, your users are getting right. Like let that be the North star, you know, like how much are they kicking butt with your tool? You know what I mean? Like if they're kicking butt with your tool, so much easier to set a meeting, right? So much easier to go for the close or whatever when you're, you're, you're kicking butt with, with somebody's tool. It just makes everything else so much easier. Um, okay, I, I have to ask, I, I didn't prepare you for this. So if we're not ready for it, all good. Oh no. The discovery process at Verizon. Could you give us a little, uh, a, a little like movie trailer or something to maybe kind of paint the picture to the audience of what you built? Because that obviously doing something like that for Verizon is outstanding huge kudos to you i'd be remiss if i didn't at least ask for a trailer 
<laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah. So at Verizon, we obviously had, you know, a bunch of different solutions, a bunch of different products we could sell. And so when people went to talk to someone, a lot of the times in my midday or like midtime, halftime check-ins, I would figure out that they hadn't even discovered for maybe a third of what we could offer. So we were trying to figure out, you know, how can we make sure that discovery is at 100% every single time? And it's easy to remember, so we made the acronym. But we then just broke out everything we sold into four quadrants. And we made it, um, so it was like home phone and internet, everyday tools, uh, lifestyle, and then obviously phones. <laughs> Um, and we started to build uh, just different discovery questions around it. I found people who were really good in certain areas, cross-trained the team on it. And then it became something where it's like, okay, help, where are we at, you know, in half times and people knew every single time. So when our discovery was 100% consistent, results followed, which is pretty cool. There you go. But huge congratulations <laughs> to you. So awesome. While we're while, while we're on this thread, before we jump, why don't you plug something with the audience? I know that you've got a bunch that you're working on. Obviously, you've kind of hit the platform, uh, LinkedIn specifically, that is, uh, like a tornado here. What, uh, what do you have in the works, Chelsea? Uh, right now, I'm really excited to just be building over at Goldster. So if I can ask anyone to do anything, it would be to go and follow our company page. We're getting really excited. Our marketing team, our content team are starting to push some more stuff out. So any feedback, any support is welcome. Thank you. Well, go drop Chelsea a follow as well. I'll 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 say it for you. This has been an awesome episode, a, a huge first. I kind of honestly think that I need to do more mid cycle evaluations because it leaves the suspense of like wanting to know how it ends. And I mean, I want to know how it ends so badly. Uh, but nonetheless, Chelsea, this has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Sales Stories in Real Life fam. We will see you next week. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.